Hi everyone, this is Nikki Jameson. I am a digital artist. So today we're going to do another watercolour using stencils, but this time I'm going to use a different stencil and I'm going to use some masks and some other elements to pull into the watercolour piece and we'll see how far we get. So I'm using a cold pressed canvas for this. Let me just check that. Yeah, I'm using CP01 cold pressed. I'm just going to change that to just CP02, not for any particular reason. And I'm going to fill this layer, which is my layer. Actually, it's going to be, I'm just going to use layer three at the moment. It doesn't really matter which layer I'm using. I've got my stencils fly out open at the moment, and I'm going to use this butterfly stencil. But for the meantime, what I'm going to do first, just to get it going, is to fill this canvas with some water, some watercolour. So this, I'm using burnt umber here. I think I might go for something a little bit lighter, even though I want to. Uh, let's use this cadmium-free lemon. I'm not mixing it right now, and I will probably add. A little bit more to this. Now if I wanted to put a border around this I could do so. So I know this is a bit bright at the moment so I'm just going to uh, maybe a flat might be better. This makes it a little bit lighter and then I'm going to put in some of the uh, brown ochre so the opacity is a bit low. I'm going to reduce the water a little bit. I don't think I need that much water. I'm just really filling this in. Now I'm going to blend that. So I'm just using a, I could use a circular motion, but I'm going to add some other colors into this background. And what I typically do, I usually paint the background afterwards. So I don't really know why I'm doing it first this time just to try something slightly different. So that means my butterfly is going to have to be, because there's a lot of yellow. This is very yellow here. I'm going to add in, I want to add in some titanium white here, or a little bit of white. Okay, so this can, I, I know I'm going pretty, pretty fast here, which I typically wouldn't, but I want to start doing the rest of it. Now, just to keep that, it's really just the background, I'm, going to, I'm just going to dry the layer so it doesn't flow too much. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new uh, layer and then I'm going to add a stencil. So if you've watched my previous video, I've shown you how you can create stencils from images. You can actually create them here in Rebel. You can import an image and use it as a stencil. But for now, I'm going to pick this butterfly stencil. Now, what I really want to do is I want to create um, not just one butterfly in the middle, maybe just create a couple of, of butterflies. But I will just make it a little bit larger and then I put one of them here and uh, say enter. Now what I'm going to do, I'm, before I remove this particular stencil, because I think I want to put maybe, hmm, I don't know, let's just put it here and move it around there. And then I'll maybe put one in another spot. So for this one, I'm going to actually paint in uh, with a slightly less wet brush. I'm just going to choose. Oops. You want to make sure your brush isn't isn't too big here because you don't want to go over the orange. Okay. So I'm going to now. I have to pick colors that are not not too close to to my background so that was that was if you do a background first you have to really be you have to really be careful so this is going to be a little bit multicolored because ideally I'm thinking that I probably wouldn't have picked uh, 
this bright background it should have been a little bit paler so we're just going to save this for a while so that we don't lose it and uh, then we'll continue putting the rest of the stencils on so what I've done here is I've added another butterfly using the stencil method so I didn't do a copy and paste and I really should probably have put it on a different layer but for now it's okay to just have it on the same layer and I have dried the layer so what I have done is I positioned these butterflies in sort of like the upper third and the lower third and theoretically speaking I could put one here and maybe you know one on this on this side but I just want them lined up a little bit offset just to just rather than it being bang in the center of the painting so now we've got this uh, very nice our, our, our butterflies uh, here. Uh, if I want to sort of change the position of those butterflies, I can do Control T and I can move them slightly. But since they're on the same layer, I can only move them together. OK, so if you want to have the maximum um, flexibility, you need to put your elements on separate layers. And I did press OK. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we're going to pull in some other elements and do some trial and error to see what we can create. We've got our stencils here, like you can use one butterfly or two, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And before that, what I think I will do is just to add a little bit more of a, um, a background. So I'm going to go for a flat bristle and I'm going to paint on a layer underneath the butterflies and we're going to go for i don't know maybe something something that doesn't sort of clash too much with with it put some water there because it's on a layer underneath oh it's not underneath the butterfly let's undo that it's actually on the butterfly no oh, that's correct i i was on the right layer <laughs> okay so i'm going to just very lightly just put some some paint marks there it's on paint at the moment fairly high water so let's go for this really light blue here and put something around here so it doesn't show up a lot because uh, of the deep color underneath but I really just want to put in some additional watercolor um, here you can always sample from the colors that you're using and add those so that you keep some unity okay and you can always I like to try and blend these a little bit and I'm spending time on this but you know it's it's important to pay attention to these parts and plus it's very relaxing to do this all right so we've got a little bit of back uh, a little bit of background and the, some watercolor uh, flowing there it's back on paint whenever you go back onto paint by the way the um, it'll switch back to paint from if you've got like paint and mix on so I'm just just dabbing some watercolor, some watercolor here. Okay, with the flat brush. Okay, so I've done that, enough of that for now. So what I want to do now is, um, I just want to bring in some other elements. Now in my layer stat, just to save time, I've actually brought in some um, layers, uh, some textures, um, I've got a texture mark here and um, I've got some a mark here but what I want to bring in I think I want to bring in some florals this is a PNG that I've just imported into my layer stack now you'll see the downside of putting the two butterflies on the same layer because really what I would like to do is to move this butterfly out so it's because it's obscured by the floral so what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm going to try 
and fix that. So first of all, I'll find where it is. I'm going to click on the layer and I'm going to go do Control T to transform it. And what I'm going to do is, because if I make it bigger, it's not, I don't want to extend it too much. I'm going to, I'm just going to shift it, shift the butterflies a little bit. So perhaps they're not, perhaps this is not the best placement for the butterflies, but it'll work for now. But for the meantime, we've got this floral. Um, and I'm going to just manipulate it a little bit and just make it, just put it here. So this is just an image that I have imported into my layer stack. Okay. Um, now, the other thing I want, I, I like to do is to add some uh, grunge or ornate uh, grunge to this. If I wanted to, I could actually paint on top of this by adding another layer. So if I click on this and add a new layer, because it's um, it's already a, a, a coloured um, element, there's not a lot that I will do to, to change it. But if you use a black and white or one that is uh, more a sketch type of image, you can also paint onto it. But we'll just see what happens here. Um, you don't have to use a watercolor brush. You can use uh, any brush. But I can add some. It's not a bad idea to add some watercolor on that. This is already green. I'm going to select a little bit from from the color here already and this would have to be a really sort of small brush by the way if it's going to do that and for example the flower here so it's really up to you if you want to paint it paint in this uh, or change change this in any way or add more paint to it you don't have to but it is a it is an option if you wish to if you wish to do that and just you know lighten lighten that up you could even if I select this could even put a little bit of red here if you want we have our flower layer we have our, our butterfly our, our butterfly stencil here um, and what I also am going to do now is I'm going to use our ornate grunge as well so the ornate grunge, just click on and off. It can be a little bit uh, overbearing, being um, because it's. Oops, not, not that's not the one I want. This is the one I want. Just go control T. So here is the ornate grunge. Okay, now what I would probably do with this, because it's so it's so large, I would probably put it below the uh, flower. So I think it is below the flower right now. Um, this, re this really takes a lot of playing around with, more playing around with than, than painting actually. But I'm gonna just say okay. And I don't really want it to obscure my flower, but I'm going to do um, control I to invert it. And then I can actually do control T again and I can move it, I can move it around. I can have it here. I'm gonna, in fact, I wish I could flip this over, but actually I'm not sure if I can turn it upside down. So if this is in Photoshop, I know how I can flip, I can flip this, but I can't really do that here. So I have to figure out how to do that. So now I've got my ornate grunge here and I can actually, if I want, I can duplicate that to make another one. And I'm gonna show you how to, you know, make sure that it doesn't overpower anything on your on your canvas what i can also do here is i can change that blend mode to something like either linear burn which probably would be would take it away maybe multiply um darken so since i've turned it to white all of these tend to make the white disappear but if i put it on overlay i can get something there so i'm going to put it back to normal for now okay now, there was something else I wanted to try. I wanted to try adding a texture. Um, this is another element here, which is just something that I might add to it. Do Control T. 
Um, let's move this. Let's move it here. So, it's, so I'm going to move this underneath. Okay, and I am also going to do Control I and make it uh, white again. If I want to duplicate that, then I can make another one, and then I can keep it any color, um, any color I like. Okay. Now, I will try this with uh, texture. Uh, I have a texture piece that I'm going to add in, and as you see this this picture forming, you can probably see that it's probably better for me to move these this, these butterflies because I'm actually thinking that they actually work better, maybe, kind of here rather than all over the page. Uh, hard light. I'm going to leave it on hard light for now, not because it's necessarily the best, because this doesn't necessarily fit in. But you see, my, my, my point is that you can just try, let's just try linear light. That makes it even brighter. I think I'm going to stick with hard light and I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. And then what you can do is you can you can duplicate this layer if you want to add more butterflies. So let's, for instance, say I wanted to make the butterflies smaller. All right. So I can make the butterflies smaller. It's a little bit slow here. And then what I can do is I can duplicate that layer and then do Control T. And then I've got a few more butterflies that I can kind of have, you know, going off the page or I could put somewhere else, say, you know, here. OK, so as I say, um, you can move the butterflies independ independently if you want. OK, so what I've done is I've brought in this texture, one of my uh, um, texture layers. Uh, I've added it as, as a layer and I've added it beneath my flower. Now, if I move this texture down, I'll get varying um, effects. So it really depends on where it's where it is placed. Ideally, you might want to have it um, perhaps above the layer. But it doesn't really matter because it, what matters is, is the outcome and you can always play around with it. So what I, the first thing I'm going to do to see whether this texture is going to work, it's a grungy texture and I like grunge. There's a couple of things I'm going to do with this. First of all, I'm going to set it to another blend mode. Um, now you can try, uh, this is multiply, uh, which is cool. Maybe color burn, that's kind of nice. Uh, linear burn, it's a little bit dark. And my fa one of my favorites is overlay. I think I'm going to go with color burn. Okay. And then what I'm going to do again is go uh, control T. And I'm going to, depending on where you want this texture to be, if you can move it around and you can just have it in a certain area or, you know, you can have it, you know, fairly high up. And I'm just going to pull it, pull it down and say okay okay so that has placed the texture um it's actually placed it up above my layers here now i'm just going to pull the texture down see what we get if we put it here so we can get depending on where it is you can get a very different uh outcome so you can play around with it and see where you want it to be i'm going to move it down okay but what i'm also going to do is i'm going to mask some of this out so you may not want particularly if you put it on top let me just put it on top let's put it on top of the flower here okay just to show you what i want to do here so i don't want all this texture necessarily on top of the uh, butterflies and the flower so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and then I'm going to click add layer mask that will produce a white box with a blue with a blue bound around it blue square around it make sure you're on the white box and then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you are selecting black paint and go to another brush like uh, your pastels okay so I'm going to pick this pastel dry and make it fairly 
um, opacity around maybe 40% ish and a slightly bigger brush and then I'm going to paint on this black on, on this white box and you'll see what happens is that I can remove the texture from where I don't want it okay so you can you can dab now what you're doing is you're painting away the texture okay or the grunge texture and this is really quite neat because that means you can get I don't like this is a this dry pastel I need a bigger brush So you can see a little bit more now. So, and you can do this um, quite selectively. Okay, so maybe in the places that you don't want the, you don't want the grunge. And you can see I've, the, it's changed the colors of the butterflies a little bit. Okay. So you can just remove it from the white, for example, remove it from the flower, and you'll see that here that the it's creating a mask actually but it's, you can just clean up some of that and so you only need to have the texture where you want it you might not want it obscuring your nice white grunge pieces here okay so you can use masks on any of the layers for example if I want to add a mask to the flower for example I'll just click right click add layer mask and I can actually paint away some of the flower and what it will do is re reveal the layer below now I don't want to remove too much of this flower because I actually kind of like it so I'm not removing most of it but I just wanted to show you that you can you know you can get this really interesting effect and because it's it's kind of um grungy here because the texture is grungy but also the the brush that i'm using is a dry pastel as well it's very it's very grainy so if you don't if you no longer want to mask out the flower you can just right click you can um lock the layer mask or you can delete the layer mask and it will bring it it will bring the flower back Okay, now the last thing I want to do is on this ornate, on the ornate grunge, which I've turned to white, I wanted to just add maybe a little bit of color. One, the best way to do is to add a new layer above it. And then, oops, that's a pastel brush. I'm going to go back to my watercolor brush. Let's go to my bristle. And I'm just going to... You need to be circumspect with your color. You don't really want it to overpower it all. And you can just add some, you know, paint. Maybe, I don't know, make it a little bit darker. And so it will, f because you're, you're painting on it now, you're not, uh, you know, you're not winning the selection or anything. So it will all show up. And if you happen to go over, you can just add a layer mask and you can you can clear up you can clear up where you've kind of gone over. All right. That's what I would use uh, a layer mask for in this case. OK. So that is all I'm doing here is painting in the grunge. And, you know, if I add, I don't know. A greeny color here say just you know to add some more color here my brush is a little bit bigger but then what I can do I'm on the layer 6 I will uh, right click layer 6 add a layer mask go back to your pastel go to to black make your brush smaller And then you can you can just paint away what you don't want. Okay. So you can you can be quite creative there. If you make your brush bigger, you'll be able to. 
paint more. So you can use masking to you know just mask away any additional paint that you don't you don't really want there. Maybe a new layer. Um, maybe this is a stencil that I created myself, and I can kind of move it. I don't know. I could put it here. I don't think I want it to be that that large. Okay. And maybe I'm not sure where it would go. I don't know. Maybe maybe here. Just for argument's sake. Okay, and then you can paint into that. Let's go back to my watercolor. And I'm on my bristle brush. And then just, you know, paint in to make it a real sort of abstract. You can, uh, So you get a really cool sort of abstract and then you can always duplicate the layer if you want. Um, and if you don't want it to drip, just dry the layer. So now I will do backspace and then I've got a layer here that I can do control T again and I can move, I can move around. I'll just say, okay. And then what I will tend to do is to drag it perhaps underneath so it's more cohesive okay so this is just an example of what you can do with rebel i've used watercolor i've used textures i've used elements i've used uh stencils i've used a whole range of things and i've used masking to mask in and out elements as i need them i will play around a lot with uh with this but i hope you've learned something thank you very much for watching and perhaps i will see you in another video take care bye